water is critical for the survival of all living organisms. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, but only about 2.5% is fresh water, and only about 0.3% includes surface water bodies such as lakes, swamps, rivers, and streams. These surface waters are an integral natural resource and provide the habitat for freshwater aquatic life. Air pollution is an environmental threat to our lakes and streams. Human-caused pollutants from vehicles, factories, power plants, and agricultural activities pose a threat to these water bodies. One of the most harmful air pollutants is excess nitrogen. When nitrogen is released into the atmosphere from air pollution, some of it is deposited into sensitive watersheds as components of rain, snow, clouds, fog, gases, and fine particles. From there, it makes its way into surface water bodies such as lakes and streams. Nitrogen is essential to life and in the right amounts helps maintain a healthy ecosystem but in excess amounts can be harmful. Too much nitrogen in an ecosystem can lead to what is called eutrophication effects. These effects include nutrient imbalances, changes in species composition, increases in invasive species, and ultimately a decline in ecosystem health. High elevation lakes in the west are particularly sensitive to nitrogen deposition. Excess nitrogen, along with naturally occurring phosphorus, will fertilize the water. As nitrogen increases, cyanobacteria, green algae including diatoms, and aquatic plants will begin to grow faster if conditions are favorable. At first, there are just minor shifts in species composition. As excess nitrogen increases, algae growth becomes excessive, leading to a decline in water clarity damage to habitat and food resources, and a deficiency of oxygen for fish and other aquatic life. This brings us to the concept of critical loads. As you recall from the introductory video, critical loads are used to identify when an ecosystem or a part of an ecosystem begins to experience harm from nitrogen deposition. Critical loads for nitrogen allow land managers to evaluate ecological impacts on high elevation lakes in the western United States. Critical loads developed for shifts in the most sensitive algae, diatoms, warn managers when nitrogen deposition or nutrient enrichment may be occurring in a water body. Managers can then carefully monitor lakes to see if important changes are occurring. The critical load for diatom growth was first determined in the Greater Yellowstone area. A critical load of 1.5 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare per year prevents shifts in diatom growth for lakes in this area. Subsequent research showed that a critical load of 4.1 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare per year protects western lakes from changes in algal growth. Let's take a closer look at what this critical load means for the Bridger-Teton region. Applying the critical load of 4.1 to lakes above 1,200 meters in this area suggests that nitrogen deposition is above the critical load for about 39% of the 987 lakes examined. This indicates that many lakes in this region are at risk for increased algal growth because the nitrogen deposition is too high. In the eastern United States, sulfur and nitrogen deposition are high relative to the western United States. The combined effect of acidification and nutrient enrichment has caused significant impacts to aquatic biota across the eastern United States. Recently, both sulfur and nitrogen deposition have strongly declined, with sulfur declining much faster. As a result, many lakes and streams are recovering from acidification. However, with nitrogen deposition still relatively high in the eastern United States, 
These recovering lakes and streams still have the potential to be impacted by nitrogen enrichment. Additional research is ongoing and is looking at establishing critical loads for different biological endpoints, such as harmful algal blooms and species impacts, such as aquatic invertebrate and vertebrate species. Land managers can use this information to reduce the harmful impacts of air pollution on our freshwater ecosystems, protect the valuable ecological services they provide, and sustain the diverse aquatic life that lives within them.